The mystery of the Helicoprion began with a single fossil, a perfect spiral of teeth that looked just like a buzzsaw, but with no other bones or body attached. For over a century, paleontologists fiercely debated the location of this circular saw. Was it a sharp dorsal fin, a terrifying weapon on its tail, or something else entirely? This question led to countless strange theories and shocking reconstructions in textbooks. The mystery of the Helicoprion and became one of the most perplexing puzzles until modern technology finally revealed the truth. Nowhere was this puzzle more striking than in what became known as the buzzsaw mystery. The fossil itself looked like no ordinary jaw or bone, perfectly coiled like a circular saw, serrated with tooth after tooth, and standing alone without any supporting structure, the spiral baffled every specialist who saw it. Unlike most fossils which preserve entire skeletons, this genus left almost nothing except these hard enamel teeth. The rest of the body was made of cartilage that decayed long ago, meaning the only surviving clue was this bizarre whirl, detached from whatever supported it in life. Early attempts to explain the feature took it in every direction imaginable. Some reconstructions placed it at the very tip of a snout, protruding like a corkscrew. Others imagined it hanging from the tail as a spinning blade, or rising from the back like a saw-edged fin. These were not just artistic embellishments. They appeared in textbooks, museum displays, and scientific diagrams throughout the early 20th century. Without any other preserved anatomy, such ideas held ground for decades, even though many conflicted with what we know about cartilaginous fish structure. Helicoprion was not a bony fish, but a cartilaginous one belonging to a lineage called Euchondrocephaly, the stem group related to modern chimeras. That made comparisons with classic shark anatomy misleading. Modern chondrichthians, including sharks, rays, and chimeras, do follow certain rules of jaw suspension and tooth replacement. Their teeth grow in organized rows, their jaws hinge and close within strict planes, and their fins join the skeleton in predictable positions. But Helicoprion operated under somewhat different skeletal constraints. Trying to fit a massive spiral of teeth onto a tail or a snout simply did not match the realities of jaw mechanics in this group. If the whirl were external, dangling from the face or back, it would snag skin block, swimming and limit feeding. The more these early placements were considered in anatomical terms, the less sense they made. The persistence of the mystery came down to one glaring issue preservation. Bony fishes often fossilize almost completely, leaving behind skeletons that let scientists reconstruct whole organisms. Cartilaginous fishes like Helicoprion rarely do. Their cartilage skeletons vanish after death, breaking down before they can mineralize. This leaves almost no record of their bodies. The enamel-coated tooth whorls are the only durable remains found consistently, which explains how this genus became so defined by a single strange piece of anatomy. Scientists were left with circles of teeth floating in the rock record with little else to connect them. Because of this, the problem persisted across generations. Each new paleontologist revisited the same outdated sketches, reformulating guesses without fresh evidence. For nearly a hundred years, the world stood as one of the oddest unsolved riddles in vertebrate paleontology, a creature known almost entirely from one extraordinary anatomical detail. Reconstructions became both familiar and misleading, turning a genuine scientific puzzle into something bordering on myth. But speculation could not solve the structural questions. The world's true position required evidence that earlier scientists simply could not access. What they needed was a way to look inside the surrounding rock and into the faint remnants of cartilage without destroying the specimen itself. That kind of tool did not exist for the first researchers who puzzled over this fossil, but eventually it became possible and once applied, it changed everything. In 2013, everything shifted when researchers applied high-resolution CT scanning to a key Idaho specimen, IMNH 37,899. 
For the first time, scientists could build a precise three-dimensional reconstruction of the fossil without cutting into it. Decades of guesswork could finally be tested against the hidden traces of cartilage preserved within the rock, offering an anatomical context that earlier generations never had. Until then, every proposed reconstruction had floated on reasoning and analogy. Place the whirl at the snout and feeding made little sense. Attach it to the tail and the animal's swimming ability collapses. Even positioning it in the lower jaw was hypothetical because cartilage rarely fossilizes, leaving only the harder enamel teeth. With no supporting structures to study, paleontologists could argue endlessly without any stronger ground for one idea over another. The CT data changed that. Scans exposed faint but crucial remnants of cartilage still surrounding the world. These images resolved into a full model showing the spiral teeth locked inside the mandibular symphysis, the very midline of the lower jaw. Instead of being a detached external weapon, the saw-like spiral was built directly into the architecture of the mouth. On either side, thick labial cartilages braced the structure laterally while tessellated cartilages encased it from within. This reinforced housing anchored the entire whirl against the stresses of biting, transforming the image of Helicoprion from a bizarre oddity into a coherent, if unusual, predator. Jaw mechanics also became clearer. Unlike sharks alive today, Helicoprion displayed autodiastylic suspension the palatoquadrate or upper jaw articulated with the neurocranium at two separate points. This was unusual compared to modern Salakians, but diagnostic of the eucondrocephalan lineage, the same stem group related to today's chimeras. The double attachment created a distinctive hinging system. As the mouth closed, the guiding plates of cartilage kept the spiral of teeth firmly in its curved track, preventing distortion and ensuring that each successive tooth rotated smoothly into biting position. This system had a notable functional consequence. Because the whirl was embedded at the jaw's midline and buttressed by labial cartilage, tooth growth and movement could operate as a coordinated conveyor. Newly formed teeth emerged at the inner coil, rotated forward as older ones shifted toward the edge and preserved a sharp cutting margin at all times. Together with the unusual suspension of the jaws, this design created a mechanism tuned for traction slicing and controlled feeding, not for showy external display. The new reconstruction carried a decisive message. Helicoprion's buzzsaw was no longer seen as a mysterious ornament hanging awkwardly from some random spot on the body. Instead, it was revealed as an integrated structure shaped by evolution to function within the animal's mouth. CT imaging stripped away the century of speculative diagrams and fixed the world in a single defensible place, anatomically consistent and biomechanically feasible. With its position resolved, the deeper question now stood in front of researchers. If this spiral of teeth truly belonged inside the lower jaw, supported and guided by cartilage, what role did it play in the daily life of the animal beyond location? What advantage did the saw give its owner in the struggle for survival? And how did it handle the prey of the Permian seas? From the moment paleontologists realized the buzz saw teeth sat in the lower jaw, another challenge emerged working out what this strange structure actually accomplished for the animal when it fed. On the surface, a coiled spiral of over a hundred teeth looks like a clumsy excess, too large and unwieldy to be useful. Yet evidence shows it was not ornamental or vestigial at all, but a dynamic tool engineered by evolution to grow continuously and function efficiently. Like sharks, Helicoprion constantly replaced teeth, but instead of simple parallel rows, the new additions pushed forward into the spiral, keeping a sharp and active cutting edge at nearly every stage of its life. At first, fossil experts imagined a simple answer. Perhaps this predator was built to crack ammonites. Those shelled mollusks uh, dominated the seas in the Permian. 
and their hard casings seemed perfect for testing a serrated jaw. But closer examination revealed problems with that idea. The individual teeth were pointed and blade-like, rather than blunt or reinforced poor candidates for crushing armor. What CT modeling and biomechanics instead suggested was a structure optimized for slicing motions and traction, not for blunt impact. This fine-tuned mechanism was more likely adapted to catch and process soft-bodied prey, such as squid-like cephalopods or poorly armored fish, while still providing a way to strip out flesh from shells when needed, rather than crushing them outright. The structure of the spiral teeth supported this perspective. Tooth shape changes along its length. The smaller inner teeth curve like hooks, ideal for snagging or gripping prey. The middle section is sharper and blade-like designed for shearing through flesh. And the larger outer teeth could apply steady force to push captured material deeper down the jawline. In effect, the whirl acted like a staged conveyor system, snag slice and push rather than a single crushing surface. Each part of the spiral worked in sequence, ensuring the prey moved progressively toward the throat. Biomechanical analysis made the picture sharper. When researchers reconstructed the bite, they found that the spiral was braced by broad cartilage plates, giving the jaw system notable leverage. A three-point contact system stabilized the entire bite, guiding the teeth through a controlled arc. The result was smooth, repeatable slicing, not clumsy rotation. Estimates from modeling studies suggested bite forces in the range of 1.2 to 2.4 kilonewtons figures, putting Helicoprion in the same league as many modern shark species. These forces balanced by the guiding cartilage framework turned the whirl into a precise feeding instrument capable of tackling mid-sized prey without losing grip or motion stability. Even the smallest details in the fossil record supported this shift in thinking. Under the microscope, scratches remain preserved along the enamel of helicoprion teeth. Instead of heavy chipping or fracture patterns, which you would expect from breaking shells, paleontologists found thin, consistent grooves. These marks align better with the passage of soft tissue under steady traction, much like the damage caused when feeding on squid arms or slabs of fish muscle. Combined with the mechanical data, this microscopic evidence pointed strongly toward a diet centered on soft-bodied animals. Taken together, the world transforms from a baffling novelty into an impressively reliable feeding strategy. Rather than relying on brute force, helicoptery on used, coordinated movement and shifting tooth geometry to control prey from the moment of capture until swallowing. Imagine a squid crossing its path, hooked by the outer teeth, dragged inward as blade-like sections cut through tissue, then pushed deeper into the throat as each successive tooth line handed off the prey. Chui ya. Nothing in the Permian Oceans had a conveyor system quite like it, and once prey was caught, escape would have been almost impossible. The buzz saw teeth, therefore served not as a showpiece weapon, but as the central tool of a specialized predator. And with a jaw design so unique and efficient, the next question arises naturally, just how large could a fish like this grow to be in order to command the waters of its time? Estimating the size of Helicoprion has always depended on the only durable part it left behind the spiral of teeth. With the rest of its cartilaginous skeleton long gone, researchers had to use world diameter as a proxy. The largest preserved specimens, some measuring over half a meter, 1.6 feet across, offered the only ruler for scaling the animal's full body. Actual reconstructions vary, but most estimates fall in a range of about three to eight meters, 10 to 26 feet in total length. Smaller whirls, roughly 20 to 30 centimeters, 8 to 12 inches wide, translate to animals between 3 and 5 meters, 10 and 16.5 feet, while larger whirls of 35 to 40 centimeters, 14 to 16 inches, line up with reconstructions in the 5 to 8 meter, 16.5 to 26 feet range. 
The biggest known fragmentary specimen, a 56 centimeter, 22 inch whirl, implies an individual exceeding 7.5 meters, 25 feet, placing it firmly among the great predators of its time. That span in estimates emerges from different scaling methods. Some paleontologists look to caseodontoids' close relatives who left more of their skeletons behind to guide ratios of jaw to body length. Others measure growth spacing within the spiral itself, comparing how new teeth were added throughout the animal's life. These parallel approaches rarely produce identical numbers, but together they reinforce an image of Helicoprion as a fish that sometimes reached lengths equal to today's largest lamnid or basking sharks. Not a medium-sized scavenger, but a giant with a specialized slicing jaw built for active predation. At those sizes, Helicoprion would not have lived on scraps. Instead, it would have been one of the ocean's largest cruising predators, capable of tackling prey substantial enough to fuel its metabolism over long hunts. A six to eight meter, 20 to 26 foot Helicoprion bears, comparison to a white shark or a basking shark in bulk, formidable enough to regulate prey populations and define its ecosystem. Its saw-toothed jaw anchored at the midline would have given it an advantage over smaller fish, and its size alone positioned it near the top of the Permian marine food web. Its role becomes even clearer when you trace where its fossils appear. Whirls have been uncovered across the Urals in Russia. The Phosphoria Formation of Idaho and other parts of the Western United States, Canada, Mexico, Kazakhstan, Australia, China, Japan, and even Norway. This wide distribution shows Helicoprion was not confined to one coast or basin, but thrived across much of Panthalassa. The Permian climate dominated by the supercontinent, Pangaea created warm tropical shelves and nutrient rich shallows that supported swarms of cephalopods and small fish. Across these environments, Helicoprion repeatedly carved out a place as a successful specialist, achieving a geographic range that true apex predators often require. Its reign, however, was not permanent. Around 252 million years ago, the biosphere experienced the Permian-Triassic extinction, Earth's most severe mass, die off. Triggered by massive volcanic events and chemical shifts in the oceans, the collapse eliminated roughly 90% of marine species. Specialized predators like Helicoprion, reliant on steady supplies of cephalopods and other mid-level prey, likely could not adapt quickly enough to the cascade of shortages. By the close of the Permian, the world-jawed fish disappeared from the fossil record, leaving no descendants to carry on its unusual design. This story leaves a striking contrast. Helicoprion reached lengths matching the world's largest modern sharks, spread across multiple continents, and ruled its niche with a uniquely engineered jaw. Yet the very adaptations that secured its success may also have made it vulnerable to sudden environmental collapse. What remains today are hardened spirals of teeth, each one a durable marker of an animal that once dominated the seas. And with so much of its body gone, we are left to piece together its existence from these puzzling coils reminders of how even the greatest predators can vanish until only fragments endure. What finally gave context to Helicoprion's strange anatomy was the 2013 CT study of specimen IMNH 37,899. Those scans placed the spiral teeth firmly in the lower jaw at the mandibular symphysis and showed a distinct jaw suspension system diagnostic of eucondrocephalans. For the first time, the whirl made anatomical and functional sense. At the same time, scientists acknowledge limits remain. Without better postcranial fossils, we still cannot lock down the full body plan with confidence. But this case shows how technology can reopen century-old debates answering questions once thought unsolvable. Which part of this jaw surprises you most? The spiral itself, the size or the feeding method? Tell us below.